The Pool Guy Podcast Show. The Pool Guy Podcast Show. The Pool Guy Podcast Show. Hi, and welcome to the Pool Guy Podcast Show. In this episode, I'm going to talk to you about clearing up a green pool. I'm going to offer you some tips and strategies when you run into different situations or problems as you're trying to clean up your green pool. Or if you do a service, um, if you're doing green pool cleanup, I'll offer you some good tips on how to do that also. If you're looking for the best app available to automate your billing, organize your pool route, notify your customers, and track your repairs, go to useaquasuite.com. AquaSuite has been built by the pool industry professionals for the pool industry professionals to give us the tools we need to get the most out of our business. Tell them you heard about it on the Pool Guy podcast show for an exclusive offer when you sign up. So one of the first things that I tell the guys in my coaching group when they message me or call me regarding a green pool cleanup is why is the pool green? I'm not going to go into a lot of details about chemistry and balancing the water, but I'm going to point out a few things that could contribute to the fact that the pool is green, which could make it harder to clear up um, if you're trying to clear up the green pool, and that's why I mentioned this. So one of the things that could cause the pool to be green is poorly running equipment. So that's the first thing you want to make sure is that the equipment actually works. So I tell the guys the first thing you want to do is go over to the pump and turn on the timer. If it's an automated system, go ahead and turn it on and see if the pump actually comes on and is running. So that's the first thing you want to do. If you just bought a house and the pool is green in the backyard, um, you bought a house as is and you're going to try to clear it up. So the first thing you need to know is, is the equipment actually working and functioning? And so the first thing you do is test the pump, make sure it turns on. If the pump doesn't turn on, then of course that's going to be a problem because you do need the pump working in order to clear the pool up. So that's something that you need to address if the pump's not working. Uh, hopefully um, you can get it working to clear up the green pool without having to replace it, but sometimes you may have to replace your pump or motor to get everything working again. The next part of the equipment that you want to check to make sure that it's functioning is the filter. If it's a sand filter, it's pretty easy. You just have to backwash it and see you get that working and get the PSI down. If it's a cartridge filter, or D filter, it could be more problematic to diagnose. Um, so the first thing you want to do is take the top off the filter on a DE or cartridge filter, clean the filter and inspect the elements or the grids to make sure that there's no tears in the grids and that the cartridges aren't really old. You can tell the cartridges are old basically by the bands on the cartridge. Um, if they're really worn off or there's no bands at all or if the pleats are really ex- expanded out. Uh, chances are the cartridge filter is no good. It's going to make the green pool cleanup process a little bit more difficult if you're using the old cartridge. And I get this question also from one of the guys in the group is, well, if I'm going to clean the green pool up and I'm using the cartridge, if I replace it, I'm going to ruin the new cartridge. But that's not necessarily true. Um, the cartridge is really durable. If you're trying to clear up a green pool with an old cartridge or a multiple cartridge filter for cartridges, it makes it more difficult if it's not filtering properly versus just buying a new cartridge or a new pack of four cartridges and putting them in there during the process. Because you can hose off the algae pretty easily on a new cartridge. It's not going to damage it or shorten the life of the cartridge in most cases unless the pool is like really severely green. Um, So replacing the cartridges as you're doing the green pool cleanup process at the beginning is actually a smart idea and one you should consider if the cartridges look worn out. It'll make it harder to do with older cartridges, but not impossible. You just have to uh, take a longer process to do. As far as the DE filter, if you notice any torn grids or if the manifold's cracked, definitely it's going to make the green pool up process pretty much impossible because DE will go right back into the pool. The pool's not going to filter properly and the green pool's not going to clear up in that case. Generally with a sand filter, um, you can just backwash it and get everything working again and it's fine. Um, typically you don't need to take it apart and replace the sand and the sand filter just by getting everything working again and doing the, a different method with the sand filter, which I'll also describe in this podcast to you. Um, there's an alternate method with the sand filter that works really effectively, um, but we'll address that when I talk about actually cleaning up the green pool. And so I guess an umbrella to all of this is to make sure there's power to the house. Uh, a lot of times a green pool cleanup, you'll be doing a real estate 
type deal. Someone's trying to flip the house, and you get back there, and there's no power. I've done that before where I got to the pool, and I, I called the owner. I'm like, hey, there's no power back here. He's like, oh, I didn't know you needed power for what you had to do. And yes, of course, you need power because you need to run the equipment. Um, so make sure there's power to the equipment. Again, that's all part of checking why the pool is green. I'm not going to go into like the fact that the, the customer didn't take care of the pool or it could have just been a tenant living there and giving the landlord trouble. Um, those are all reasons why the pool didn't have any chem chemicals in it and it turned green. So it's green basically because it's, it's of course not balanced with the right chemistry and it may be green of course because the equipment's not hasn't been running properly. So those are factors definitely look at first. Once you assess it and realize that okay, this is what's wrong with it, it's just the fact that they didn't have the they didn't put chemicals in for two months, or it wasn't running for a month. And once you get it up and running, you would do the green pool cleanup process, which I'm gonna go over here in detail for you in this podcast. So I have several videos on my YouTube channel with different clean green pool cleanup methods. I'm gonna just gonna make it simple and just put it into three categories for you. One would be the sodium brom bromide method, which is uh, the yellow treen or the swamp treat, or you can use any other brand of the um, sodium bromide product like um, yellow treat. And then there's the newer method that I just did. It's the pool RX method where you use the pool RX as your algicide. And then there's also a method that I don't really have I haven't really filmed it because I don't have a lot of sand filters in my area, but it's called the flock method. And this is really effective with a sand filter. Not so, not as effective with the cartridge and D filter. Um, I'll, go, I'll give you the reasons for that also, why it's not quite as, as effective as the other method that I like using, which is um, using an algicide and using the shock and awe method, which is um, put enough chemical chlorine in there to, um, you know, shock and awe the the references to the uh, first Iraq war where they went in there and just bombed them out and that's what you're doing to the pool you're kind of bombing it out with the chlorine to get every get to kill the algae and to turn the pool really quick back to blue so let me start by touching on the flock method and you can use a product like dropout whatever your local pool store carries just tell them you need to flock your pool and basically what this does for a sand filter it's it's really a, a good method and uh, a lot of guys use it in Texas and uh, parts of the south where they have a lot of sand filters in Arizona. And basically the sand filter, the problem with the sand filter is that it filters so inefficiently that the algae is too fine of a particle for it to filter out. Which means that if you're trying to do the, the, the traditional green pool shock and awe method with a sand filter, it will take a very long time. So it could take three up to three weeks with a sand filter because of the ineffective filtration. So to speed things up, what the flock agent does is it clumps the algae and everything together and then it'll drop it to the bottom of the pool. And if you have a sand filter, 90% of the sand filters have a multi-port valve. So you can actually put that multi-port multi valve into waste mode and vacuum all the stuff on the bottom of the pool. So the directions for the flock method are on the back of the bottle. It's very easy. You would put the flock in the pool. You would raise the chlorine level up, of course, to 10 parts per million. Then you would run the pool for one to two hours in recirculate mode if you have that on your um, multi-port. And then you would turn the pool off for 24 to 48 hours and let all the algae kind of drop to the bottom of the pool with the flock and then you would vacuum it out to waste. So this will speed up the green pool cleanup in a sand filter pool pretty rapidly. So instead of taking three weeks, you can get it down to a week, a week and a half with the flock method because you're actually dropping all the algae to the bottom and then vacuuming out to waste, which is kind of convenient with a sand filter having the ability to vacuum out to waste mode. And so if you have a sand filter at the pool that's green, um, definitely think about doing the flock method and that will just clump everything up so that it can actually fall to the bottom and be vacuumed out pretty rapidly. If you have a portable uh, cleanup pump, you could probably do this method pretty effectively in a DE or cartridge pool. The reason why I don't use this method here in California is that about half the pools that, I do green, that I've do that i done green pool cleanups on are cartridge, 
and the other half are defilter. And these filter very efficiently in most cases. And so there's no reason to really do the flock method to drop everything down to the bottom of the pool because the filter will actually do the job really well in filtering out all the algae in the pool. So with a cartridge filter and a defilter, the video that I the steps are the same in the videos. Basically, you would um, clean the filter. So if it's a cartridge filter or D filter, you would take it apart, hose it off. With a D filter, you would recharge it with fresh DE. Of course, at the beginning, I mentioned checking for any kind of tears or rips in the grids or cartridges. You put everything back together, and then um, you would start the green pool cleanup process, which is putting enough chlorine in the pool to counterbalance the algae in the pool. So what this basically means is, let's say you have a 15,000 gallon pool, you can't see the bottom, there's a mosquito larvae in there. I would consider this a pretty green pool and you're going to need a lot of chlorine to counter it. If you just try to do this with you know, a case of chlorine, you put it in there and you run the pool, it's not going to do anything because all the organics in the water are going to use up the chlorine really fast. And so one thing that's really surprising in a green pool cleanup with this method is that the next day when you get there, you put in tons of chlorine, and when you do the reading the next day, usually you have zero chlorine, which is um, really scary. But that's what happens a lot of the times is that the algae, the, the chlorine is all destroyed or used up getting rid of the algae and all the organics, which is like the mosquito larvae or anything else in the pool that's in there. So... Um, for a 15,000-gallon pool, you definitely want to just put a, a ton of chlorine in there. There's charts online. You can go to like online calculators to see how much to add, but you really don't need those. You just want to put a large amount of chlorine in the pool, and I would say for a 15,000-gallon pool that's that bad, you can probably put 8 gallons of liquid chlorine. You could do a combination of liquid and shock, so you can do like 4 gallons of liquid, 4 bags of shock. You can even put 10 gallons of liquid chlorine in. That's fine. And then you would use either the uh, sodium bromide method, which is the yellow trine method. Basically, any product that has that active ingredient, the sodium bromine, in there. And that would um, definitely uh, help with the chlorine in the pool. You can do this without using an algicide, but it would take longer and it may not have the same effect. I always like using the algicide because it speeds things up and it makes it much easier to do. And you know it's going to be effective if you do it properly. So... With this method, you would uh, put 8 gallons of liquid chlorine in, and then I would probably use about um, 16 ounces of the yellow, yellow Treen product, and basically the cap on those containers is about 4 ounces, and you would just sprinkle it in the pool, add the chlorine, brush the walls really well. I'm not really worried about the debris on the bottom because I can't see it right now. You could scoop it out if you wanted to with the leaf rake and scoop out any kind of large debris. That's fine. Um, but typically I just brush the pool really well. I get the surface debris off so that the, that I can run the pump and the skimmer is not going to get clogged up. And then I worry more about the bottom once I can see what's in there. I don't think it's a, a really wise idea to vacuum the bottom with, um, let's say if you have a vacuum system. And if you can't see the bottom, you may run into some problems. You could suck up rocks and break the blade on your vacuum system. So for me, I think once it's clear up and I clear it up enough that I can see the bottom... I really would, would rather not do that until I can see what I'm actually vacuuming up or even um, skimming out. If you can't see what you're skimming out, it, it just gets kind of weird. You may pick up some, you may not know what's in the bottom of the pool. Um, and a lot of times there's like giant rocks, which is weird. I don't know what how those end up in the green pool, but I've found them a lot when I'm doing a green pool. Maybe kids come by and throw them in there. Um, but I always find that weird. Or weird things in the bottom of the pool, like lawn furniture, um, all that stuff you can see uh, you'll run into when you do this for a living. So that's what you're going to do is you're going to um, put a lot of chlorine in there, brush the pool really well, and then you're going to run the pool for 24 to 48 hours continuously. Typically I run it for 24 hours because I get back to the next day to do the next step of the green pool cleanup. At this time you can also use the uh, Pool RX to do the as your algicide. So um, in a 15,000 gallon pool, you would just get the black unit, even though it's rated for a higher pool. You can use up a lot of the mineral in there doing this cleanup. So you would put it in the pump basket is what I prefer. Then you would run the pool for 24 hours. 
and then the next day you would get back there and you would clean the filter and I was asked this question with the Polar X it says not to backwash or clean the filter for two weeks because you're not you're supposed to let it circulate in the water but you're running the pool 24 hours the minerals themselves are going to be used up fighting the green pool so there's not going to be a lot of residue in the filter at the end of 24 hours because again the minerals are being used up to fight the algae so in this case it's perfectly fine to use the Polar X and clean the filter the next day you're probably going to need to get a booster anyway after you've done this process to kind of make the Polar X unit continue working for the season. Um, so don't worry about that when you use the Polar X for this process. I find the Polar X to be very effective in the green pool cleanup. I also find their directions online to be inaccurate where it says you can do this with like two gallons of liquid chlorine. Um, in my experimenting with the product, I've tried this with two gallons of chlorine. I can tell you that it's not going to be effective with a pool that is green with the mosquito larvae like that. You really need to put the typical amount of chlorine in for the shock and awe treatment with the Pool RX for it to be effective. Um, and I've mentioned that to the, the Pool RX rep that I prefer that the method with the Pool RX would be to put a large amount of chlorine and also with it like eight gallons like I mentioned along with the Pool RX. So the next day you get there and then you would clean the filter again. You would take a D filter apart, hose the grids off, get all the algae off the DE, and then you would recharge it. Cartridge filter, the same thing. Again, I recommend starting with fresh cartridges if you can. If it's not out of the budget, that makes it a lot easier. Sometimes the cartridges are actually still pretty good, but a lot of the times they're worn out, so that, that would help with the process. The next day when you get there, the pool should be like a milky blue, and you should be able to see the bottom if you did the process correctly and added enough chlorine. And if you, if you can't see the bottom or if it doesn't look good, then go ahead and shock the pool again with lots of chlorine or the powdered shock, whatever you can get in your area, and then run the pool again for 24 hours. But you do want to clean the filter regardless if you can see the bottom or not, and get the filter clean a second time. And by the third day, you should be able to, uh, it should be really getting clearer. And of course, on the second day, I mentioned that the chlorine could be zeroed out, so you want to raise the chlorine back up again uh, above 10 parts per million. And then keep running the pool 24 hours. And if you have time to go there the third time, the third visit, uh, right after that, the third day, um, the pool should be turning around fairly well at that point. And you probably will not need any more filter cleanings after that fact. So that's basically the method. You, um, you assess the equipment. Then you pick your method, either the flock with the sand filter or the shock and awe with the cartridge or D filter. You would bring the chlorine level up really high. You would brush the pool, scoop out debris if you like. Um, and then you would go the next day, clean the filter, let the pool run 24 hours, go the next day, clean the filter again, add more chlorine to the pool, run the filter longer, and you should see a turnaround. So it's not really rocket science. It's just a matter of a process that needs to be followed correctly. Um, I also did a video on the um, Yellow Out product. It's a different kind of um, green pool cleanup. You could definitely do that method. I just don't prefer that method. I prefer using the sodium bromine or the Polar X as my algicide. I find it to be easier for the consumer and for the pool service professional to use those methods versus the yellow out. It's not a bad method. I filmed a video on it. You can follow that video in that process. I just think the other methods are much easier to do. And then I know some people are going to say, well, what about the cyanuric acid level? What about the pH level? And my thought is, you know, the pool is green. It, when you add everything in there, the water is out of balance anyway, and you're not going to drain it, so you're going to just get it back to blue first. Once you get it back to blue, then you can address the high cyanuric acid level, and you can address the pH being high. It doesn't really matter if you want to lower the pH and balance it. You can do that. You're welcome to do that. But I find that the first step that I've done is get the pool back to semi blue first and then I would adjust the other chemicals in the pool and balance it out. Now some people are saying well why don't you just drain the green pool? Why are you going through this whole process? It's, it's too much work. Well in my st state California you can't drain a green pool into the street so that's number one. Number two um, a lot of times the customers don't want to drain the pool because um, they don't want to pay the high water bill which you know in some areas it could be up to $200 depending on the penalties you pay for the extra uh, the water 
and also you can actually clear it up pretty easily without draining the pool so there's really no reason to drain the pool the only time I recommend draining a pool is if there's more than three or four inches of uh, junk on the bottom of the pool or gunk to where it may not be effective to actually even try to clean it up because there's so much junk on the bottom that usually happens only if the pool hasn't been cleaned in like two or three years and it's just neglected that badly then yes drain the pool but in most cases this will turn the pool around very rapidly without needing to drain the pool and it's really effective and just know your local laws about draining a green pool some pools of course you can't drain like a fiberglass pool or a vinyl pool and some pools you just don't want to drain because you don't need to because you can clear it up this way but if you do drain the pool and it's green, um, it is illegal in California to drain a green pool into the street. You'll get a ticket for, I believe, about $10,000 in my area. Some areas even higher. You'd have to drain it directly into the sewer line. Um, and in that case, you can probably get away with it. But still, there's ordinances that prevent you from draining a green pool. I mentioned that I, in the, I think the other podcast that I did a green pool cleanup for a replaster because the plaster did not want to get in trouble by draining a green pool. So I cleared it up for him, and then he drained it. So um, you can definitely see the reasoning behind that. You don't want to get in trouble and get fined. And you're thinking, well, who's going to find out on draining the pool into the street? Uh, well, one of the neighbors in your neighborhood is probably going to call the city on you and report that you're draining the pool. It happens all the time, and definitely don't want to do that. So now if you do green pool cleanup as a living, you definitely want to invest in either a portable filtration system like the Advantage PortaVac or MiniVac 2. These are pre-built standalone filtration systems and you can actually use these for green pool cleanups also. You can also build a portable green pool cleanup pump. It's relatively inexpensive for about $250. But you have to be realistic also when you're using one of these pumps to pump out the pool. Whenever you're vacuuming up a pool that has a lot of algae dust in the bottom, it's going to stir it up. It's not going to be like you're going to vacuum it out. It's going to be like blue streaks. And it's going to actually make the pool probably a little cloudy again, maybe a little bit green again in some cases, depending on how much dust is stirred up. So just be aware of the fact that there are limitations even for vacuuming, manually vacuuming a green pool that has a lot of algae dust. So it may take a good two or three vacuuming sessions to actually get all the dust out of there. And the pool will be crystal clear after that point. Again, that just depends on the severity severity of the green pool and how much algae dust is actually in there and then if you have a very large pool 25,000 30,000 gallons you're going to have to up the chlorine levels I mentioned for a 15,000 gallon pool like 8 gallons if you're doing a 30,000 gallon pool it's not unheard of to put 20 gallons of liquid chlorine in there to get the level up enough to counterbalance the algae and so there is a process for the green pool cleanup and definitely watch the videos I have on my YouTube channel. They're, they're, they're pretty good. They go into good in-depth. Um, I show this in-depth in those videos. And you can definitely uh, clear up your pool using the methods that I mentioned here. And definitely um, it's not. it looks daunting when you go back there and the pool is green. But it's definitely not impossible to clear it up. And it's actually a pretty quick process. You can have it back to blue within two weeks in most cases. The next day, again, don't expect a miracle. Don't expect it to be crystal clear. You can see the bottom. It's going to be that milky blue color, uh, kind of like uh, a little bit cloudy too, but it definitely will look a lot better than the green pool at the first day for sure. So if you're a homeowner looking for more help with your pool care, definitely check out my website. I have an ebook available there for $9.99. Go to my website, swimmingforlearning.com, and get this resource. If you're in the industry and you're looking for more one-on-one -on -one help with your business, consider joining my coaching site. You can learn more about that also on my website, or you can go to the dedicated site that I created, poolguycoaching.com. And for $10 a month, you can text me in real time. And for $20 a month, you can call me. You also get lots of discounts and benefits that pretty much makes the membership free um, for the first two or three years if you use all the benefits in the group. So definitely all the group discounts. So definitely think about joining the group if you're in the industry to get more help. This podcast has been brought to you by InyoPools.com. InyoPools has been helping pool owners find the right pool parts in 2001. With over 50,000 pool parts in stock, order online today and have the parts delivered right to your door. And the podcast is also brought to you by the Riptide Pool Vacuum System. The Riptide is a powerful vacuum system that will allow you to get large debris off the bottom of the pool rapidly. To learn more about the Riptide, 
you can visit their website at www.riptidevac.com. So thanks for listening to this podcast. Have a great rest of your week, and God bless. The Pool Guy Podcast Show. The Pool Guy Podcast Show. The Pool Guy Podcast Show.